is a quick film about a piece of equipment I occasionally use. It's really, really old school. You don't see them around much. I've looked in lots of engineers' books. Never really found any reference to these in any of the publications of the time. I've heard it called various names. I've heard it called a blacksmith's drill. I've heard it called a John Ball drill. Some people call it a colliery drill or a fitter's drill. There's probably loads of other names out there. As you can see, the equipment is in two parts. There's this bit here, which I call the stand. You could call it the column or the pillar. And there's this bit, which holds the drill. I find this equipment really handy for carrying out in situ repairs to worn holes on things that are just too big to stick on your pillar drill or milling machine. You can bolt this bit of equipment onto pretty much anything. I've also seen them tack welded onto things or clamped on. So we'll just take a look at it. This part which I've already given a name to. You can see there's your base here with a nice slot in it. You can bolt that down to whatever you want. On this one the column and bolts from the base which means you could put a bigger column in or whatever. And then there's this support arm here which as you can see moves up and down and can be clamped in various positions. This is the business end of the tool. Here is Morse 4, number 4 Morse taper socket. That means you can drill or ream up to 2 inch or 50 mil diameter. Quite a large size, quite hard work. Gets the job done. And as you will have already have heard, there's a ratchet. This tool only allows you to go forwards, you can't go backwards with it. Here we have a hardened steel centre that engages on the support arm and it screws in and out on a really nice big chunky Acme thread, maybe it's a square thread, don't know. Screwing this out applies the pressure to push the cutting tool into the work and progress. So here's the offending job in question. This is job on my McConnell logging saw. There's a swinging table which allows you to cross cut timber. And it swings around these pivot holes here. Here's one I've done earlier. And it's all nice and tight, but previously frames were really slack and worn and it was getting to be a bit of a liability. So we've done this pin here. Here's the next one to do. These holes have worn, they're egg-shaped. They've gone out of line, they're in a the right state. And to try to put a new pin in that hole there is a waste of time because it's very quickly going to wear loose again because the hole's not right. So we're going to sort that out using the ratchet drill. Right, so here's the setup. What I've firstly done is level the machine up using nothing more than a spirit level. I've leveled up the chassis rails so that I've got some kind of point of reference, some kind of confidence that the hole I'm going to put in is actually going to be straight. You can see I've got a level set up on there. This part of the tool is parallel so I can put a level on there with confidence and be sure the reamer, I've got a 1 in 7 16 reamer to go in there. It's going to go in straight. Having checked its level, I'm using another square off the chassis rail just to check that we're going in square. And it's all looking good. I put some cup cutting oil on the job, as you'd expect. And that's pretty much it. Really quietly, gently, nice and slowly. It's quite therapeutic, this. These holes are presently about an inch and three eighths, but they're worn and they're oval. And I'm taking them up a sixteenth to inch and seven sixteenths with this reamer. Some of you might be wondering why aren't I doing this with a mag drill? Well, I haven't got a mag drill. And to get a mag drill that'll work in this size, there's not many of them. And mag drills generally don't take four more taper shanks, and most of my tooling is on taper shanks not on those very expensive rubber brick cutters. A fraction of a turn of the thread on the advancing screw each time, just enough to keep the pressure on. If you have too much pressure, that's fairly obvious, things go wrong. On this device, if you don't have enough pressure, the hardened centre in the end just pops out and the job all goes skewing. This job, as you can see, the screw's quite short, but on this job, just enough to get through in one hit.
as you rotate the centre on the end, weighs a bit of a dimple in the support arm, the support arm is replaceable. If you need to go through quite some depth, longer than what the screw can do, I just put a bit of white paint around the centre so you can tell where you've been when you drop it out, otherwise you've got to set it all up again and it's back. And we're through. Didn't take long. One nicely rimmed out hole. Here's the pin I've machined previously. I've made this to about 1.4375, maybe 1.438. And with a little bit of jiggling, there we are. I'm calling that quite a good fit for a piece of agricultural machinery. I've reamed out the other end now. You can see, I've got the framework. Oops. And here's the fit the final pin. Moment of truth. And that's all the way in. As you can see, I've got a really nice fit there. There's no slack. Previously this frame was dancing up and down by about a quarter of an inch. I'm happy with that. Hope you enjoyed the video.